So today we are going to be solving an amazing algebraic problem. What makes this algebraic problem amazing is the presence of the floor function. So the question over here is to find the values of x that will satisfy the equation floor value of 3 upon x plus floor value of 4 upon x equals to 5. So this is unmol and now let us see the solution. How can we solve this problem? Okay, now let us start with the solution. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to get rid of the reciprocal of x. So in order to do so, I will simply take the value of 1 upon x as some other variable and let it be equals to y. Now let us substitute this value in the given equation. So now the equation will turn out to be floor value of 3 times y plus floor value of 4 times y equals to y. Okay, now look carefully. This equation that we have is not a normal equation, it is a floor equation. So now in order to solve this equation very nicely, first of all let us understand the flow function. So for example, if there is a number a that is greater than or equals to another number b and smaller than b plus 1, this means the number that we have taken should lie between two consecutive numbers and it can be equals to the smaller consecutive number. So if a number is in this particular situation, then flow value of a would simply be equals to b. Now the definition of the flow function states that the floor value of a given number is equals to the greatest integer that is smaller than or equals to the given number and this even works for the negative numbers also. And as in this particular case a lies between b and b plus 1, flow value of a would turn out to be b because it is the greatest integer that is smaller than the given number and if a was equals to b that is the number is an integer then flow value of b would also be equals to b. So this means all the numbers that lie between b and b plus 1 including b and excluding b plus 1, the flow value of all that numbers would simply be equals to b. And there's one more thing to be noted over here and that is b would strictly be an integer. So now let us use this information in order to solve our equation. So before that let us write down this particular thing very nicely. Okay so here I have mentioned the definition of the flow functions. Now let us move on to the solution. So the first thing that I am going to do is I am going to take the flow value of 3 times y as some value n. Now look carefully, if flow value of 3 times y equals to n, the first thing that we can say is that n would be a perfect integer, okay? Now according to the definition, if flow value of 3 times y is equals to n, this means 3 times y must be greater than or equals to n and smaller than n plus 1. Flow value of 3 times y would be equals to n if and only if 3 times y lie between n and n plus 1 it can also be equals to n in that case also the flow value of 3 times n would be equals to n so this thing right over here we have assumed that let the value of 3 times y equals to n now after this assumption there would be some kind of changes in this particular equation so let us do that so the changes would simply be like this way we need to replace the flow value of 3 times y as equals to n so now the equation will turn out to be n plus the flow value of 4 times y equals to y okay Subtracting n on both of these sides will give me the value of floor of 4 times y equals to 5 minus n. Now look carefully, the floor value of 4 times y equals to 5 minus n and as we have seen that n is an integer, this means 5 minus n would also be an integer and flow value always give an integer, this means this equation is also correct. Now if the flow value of 4 times y is equals to 5 minus n, this means that 4 times y can be greater than or equals to 5 minus n n has to be smaller than 5 minus n plus 1 and this thing will simply turn out to be 6 minus n okay so if the flow value of 4 times y equals to 5 minus n this means the value of 4 times y should strictly lie between 5 minus n and 6 minus n and it can also be equals to 5 minus n in that case also the flow value of 4 times y would be equals to 5 minus n now look carefully we have got two more equations and they are inequality equations one is in the pink color and one is in the blue color so now let us compare these equations so first of all take this pink color equation that says 3 times y is greater than or equals to n and smaller than n plus 1 so now what if i divide 3 in this whole inequality so i will get n upon 3 is smaller than or equals to y and that is smaller than n plus 1 upon 3 now take the second inequality and what i will do is i will simply divide in this whole inequality so i will get 5 minus n upon 4 is smaller than or equals to y and smaller than 6 minus n upon 4 okay till now everything should be clear 
So now what I will do is I will take this one as the first equation and this one is the second equation. Now from the first equation we can see that the value of y is going to be smaller than n plus 1 upon 3. So we can say that y is going to be smaller than n plus 1 upon 3. Now from the second equation we can see that the value of y is going to be greater than or equals to 5 minus n upon 4. Now carefully observe these inequalities. This one says that y is going to be smaller than n plus 1 upon 3 and this one says that y is going to be greater than 5 minus n upon 4. So this makes a clear sense that is 5 minus n upon 4 is also going to be smaller than n plus 1 upon 3. Okay. So first of all we will do the cross multiplication. So we will get 15 minus 3 times n is smaller than 4 times n plus 4. And simplifying this thing will give me 11 is smaller than 7 times n or we can say that n is going to be greater than 11 upon 7. Now look carefully to these two equations again. We can again say that y is going to be smaller than 6 minus n upon 4 and y is going to be greater than n upon 3. So comparing these two things we can say that n upon 3 is also going to be smaller than 6 minus n upon 4. Okay. Now by cross multiplication we will get 4 times n smaller than 18 minus 3 times n. And simplifying this thing will give me 7 times n smaller than 18 and therefore n would be smaller than 18 upon 7. Okay. So here we have got the second range for n and that is n is going to be smaller than 18 upon 7. And previously we have got n is going to be greater than 11 upon 7. Now recall that we have taken the value of n as equals to the flow value of y and from there we have got that n is going to be an integer. And just now we have got some ranges for n and that is n is going to be greater than 11 upon 7 and smaller than 18 upon 7. Okay, so here we have the range for n and it is given that n is an integer. So we can simply find out all the integers lying between these two fractions and they all can be the possible values for n. So the decimal value for 11 upon 7 will turn out to be 1 point. I have the remainder as 4 then 40. So 1.5 something is the value for 11 upon 7. So n is going to be greater than this thing and smaller than 18 upon 7. Now the value of 18 upon 7 will simply be turn out to be 2.5 again. So now we can see that n is between 1.5 and 2.5. And the only integer that lies between these two numbers is simply 2. And it is given that n is an integer. So n being an integer and in the interval of 11 upon 7 comma 18 upon 7 this makes the value of n as equals to 2. Now many of the people makes a mistake like this way as they have taken the flow value of 3 times y as equals to n they will directly remove n and put 2 over here and they will say that yes flow value of 3 times y is equals to 2. But again the same question what is the value of y? So putting the value of n in this thing will not make a clear sense rather putting the value of n in this two important equation will give us the value of y. As we can see that from the first equation we have that n is going to be greater than n upon 3 and smaller than n plus 1 upon 3. And from the second one we have the value of y is going to be greater than 5 minus n upon 4 and smaller than 6 minus n upon 4. Now let us replace n as equals to 2. So the first equation will turn out to be y is greater than or equals to 2 upon 3 and smaller than 2 plus 1 3 upon 3 that is 1. And putting the value of n as equals to 2 in the second equation will give me y is greater than or equals to 5 minus 2 upon 4 that is 3 upon 4 and smaller than 6 minus 2 that is 4 upon 4 and that is 1. Okay, so here we can see that we have got these two inequalities and they are basically telling us the ranges in which the value of y is going to lie. The first one says that y belongs to close interval 2 upon 3 and open interval 1. And the second one says that y belongs to close interval 3 upon 4 and open interval 1. Okay. Now we can see that there are two ranges in which the value of y is going to lie. So the question arises, which range should we take? So the answer is very simple. For example, if you have a variable m and all the possible values for m lies in the range r1 and also all the possible values for m lies in the range r2 also. So finally, we can conclude that all the possible values for m lies in the union of both of these ranges. So the same thing can be done over here as y belongs to this range also and this one also. So finally we can conclude that all the possible values of y is going to lie in the union of these two ranges. So we can say that all the possible values of y belongs to closed interval 2 upon 3 and open interval 1 union with closed interval 3 upon 4 and open interval 1. Okay. Now we can see that the decimal value of 2 upon 3 is going to be somewhat 0 0.6 and the decimal value for 3 upon 7 is somewhat 0.6. 7 and already 1 is common between them both. So this makes a clear sense that this particular range is going to be greater than this one. 
hence the union of these two will simply turn out to be this single one so we can finally conclude y belongs to the range of closed interval 3 upon 4 and open interval 1 this means y is going to be greater than 3 upon 4 or equals to 3 upon 4 and smaller than 1 okay so here we can see that we have finally got the solution for y but this is not the answer but almost the answer now why i am saying that this is not the answer almost the answer the reason this is not the answer is because the original question was to find the value of x not y and why i am saying that this is almost the answer because after this we need to just do a few steps so recall that we have taken the value of 1 upon x as equals to y now if the value of 1 upon x is equals to y this means that the value of x is going to be 1 upon y okay now y lies in the range of 3 upon 4 and 1 what if i reciprocal this inequality so we will get that 1 upon y now as we are doing the reciprocal this inequality signs will change now it will become 1 upon 5 is greater than 1 and smaller than or equals to 4 upon 3 so here we have got the range for 1 upon y and that is it is going to be greater than 1 and smaller than 4 upon 3 and the value of 1 upon y can be just replaced with x because of this particular equation that we have over here so we have finally got the value of x and that is x belongs to open interval 1 and close interval 4 upon 3 so all the possible values of x in the open interval 1 and close interval 4 upon 3 will satisfy the equation floor value of 3 upon x plus floor value of 4 upon x equals to 5 okay and this is the answer that we were looking for so this was my way to solve this particular problem if you have any other method other than this or else if you have any other question that you think i should try you can do comment below or else if you want to share any kind of picture related to a solution or a problem you can email me or else you can send it to me on my instagram the link is in the description